Okay, welcome everybody. Let's let's uh, keep this going tonight, and we're going to talk about our plant diagnostic lab for NDSU. And the question I have for you tonight is: Have you ever had like a sick tree or a, a dying plant, or maybe just a, a spotted tomato bush in your yard? Yeah, of course, we've all had those problems. But did you know that there is a plant diagnostic lab that can help you identify and manage those disorders in your yard. And I think a lot of us don't know about this great resource from NDSU. So here to tell us about it is Alex Knudsen. Alex is an entomological diagnostician for NDSU. Alex, welcome to the forums. Thank you, Tal. And thank you all for joining me. I'd like to share with you a bit about the plant diagnostic lab here at NDSU. Now, the Plant Diagnostic Lab has been open for over 50 years, and it provides a wide variety of tests and services. It's broken up into the Plant Diagnostic Lab itself, which offers horticultural and agronomic diagnostic service. And what you'll probably be mostly interested in are horticultural or landscape and garden diagnostics. We also offer the Seed Health Testing Lab, which uh, runs standardized testing for screening of plant pathogens. So the lab's purpose, it's never a bad idea to start with your local agent, but our purpose and our main goal is to help you with your diagnostic needs. And what we can provide is unbiased professional results. And if you need it, we can offer a formal report. Um, sometimes if you have uh, an interesting situation and you need a formal report, especially if you've got squabbles over something that's going on between you and your neighbor, we can offer that for you. Uh, we can also help you with your horticultural problems. If you've got issues with your lawn, spots that aren't, don't really seem to be growing very right, or you've got garden problems. Uh, and then, of course, if you have any trees that seem to be not doing so good, or maybe you've got some branches that just look a little funny. We also test field crops. And uh, we also offer home mold IDs. So if you're worried if you've got Stachybacterus or something like that, uh, feel free to bring in a sample. And lastly, we also offer insect IDs. So the lab staff uh, is made up of the director and the lead diagnostician. Uh, Jesse joined the lab in 2013, and he's currently the lead diagnostician. He's got nine years of diagnostic experience and quite knowledgeable over many different uh, plant uh, diseases and disorders. We also have the seed health specialist, um, Christine Nagoan. She joined the, the lab in July of 2017, and she has a master's in botany from NDSU. And she's served for over 23 years in the plant pathology department itself. And lastly, there's me. Um, i am just recently uh, passed my master's defense on Friday, so I'll be receiving my master's this, this semester, um, and I joined the lab in 2017. And I offer um, entomological uh, identifications as well as different management strategies for you. So <laughs> how we can help? Well, we can assist you with horticultural problems, like I said, with turf, garden, and trees, um, whole mold IDs, and of course, the really big nice thing here is there's no fee schedule for homeowner samples. So if it comes from your home, we're not going to charge you. However, some rare exclusions may apply. So if you have a sample that's exceptionally difficult and it really requires a lot of work, we may ask you to provide a nominal, very small fee. But usually almost everything is relatively free. So turf. <clears throat> some common diseases you may encounter in your yard are dollar spot and pythium. Now, if you don't know what those are, well, we'll gladly be able to help you identify those. And of course, there are also common abiotic disorders like fertilizer burn. And if you like your, your lawn to be very short, sometimes that's not a good thing. Another thing to keep in mind is thatch. How much thatch you have in your lawn can depend on how healthy your lawn is. And of course, I can also help you with any insect pests you have with your lawns. So if you're going to be sending in samples of turf, uh, you'll want to collect uh, soil or uh, with uh, the grass from the border or the affected area. So you always want to capture the marginal uh, or leading edge of the infection. Um, you'll want to wrap the sample in dry paper towels because all plants have a lot of moisture and give off a lot of moisture. And you want to pack it securely so if you send it to us in the mail, it doesn't rattle apart. 
another thing that we can help you with are your gardens and vegetables and ornamental plants specifically. Now, there are many different diseases and disorders, but one of the common ones are fungal diseases like downery and powdery, powdery mildews. Now, it's important to note that these are biologically unique organisms. Uh, so if you decide, or if you know that you have a mildew, but you don't know if it's downy or powdery, it might depend, uh, or if you select a different fung a fungicide, it might not control one or the other uh, because they're two different types of, of fungi. So if you want it identified, we'll gladly do that for you and help you um, determine what, what uh, chemicals are best for control. Um, also, if you don't know if you have bacteria or not, that could be another problem. And if you have bacterial leaf spots on your plants, well, if you use a fungicide, it's not going to help you very much. Uh, lastly, uh, we don't test for chemical injury. However, we can look at samples and determine if there is chemical injury present and then provide you with the assistance for following up with testing to see if you need to determine whether or not there has been chemical injury. Uh, and of course, lastly, there are pesky animals that get in your gardens like rabbits and deer. And of course, there's no PCR test. We can't test for rabbit damage, but we can tell you if a rabbit has been eating your carrots. Now, woody plants are another area we can really help you out with. And one of the uh, biggies that I'd really like to emphasize is Dutch elm disease. We test it for free. There's no charge for, for anybody that brings in a sample for, for uh, a Dutch elm. If they just have a random elm tree in their yard and they want to know if it's got Dutch elm, we'll gladly test it for you for free. Um, and I'd like to uh, emphasize that since it's free here at NDSU, test, test your tree before you spend a ton of money cutting it down. Your tree might be just fine. Um, also, we can help with apple trees and different diseases like fire blight, scab, and black rot. And of course, conifers as well, and like cankers and mites. Now for submitting samples of trees, you'll want to collect samples from symptomatic branches. So you'll cut the branches uh, uh, on the areas that include healthy as well as affected tissue. And usually it's most useful to capture the leading edge of the infection. So if you see where, where the infection is spreading, that's where you want to get the sample from. If you send us a completely dead branch that's all dried up, it's probably not going to be very helpful. And lastly, insect identifications. Now, uh, I can offer identification to family or species if necessary, um, and also different management strategies. And of course, different insects require different management strategies. Uh, I can also offer tips for prevention. And uh, again, this is free. So if you have, if you're worried you have bed bugs, but you don't know, and you can send us some samples, I can identify them for you and tell you if you have bed bugs or not, and then decide from there whether you need to uh, go and control this. Uh, and this, you know, this is free, so you don't have to spend a ton of money contacting a pest, a pest control operator to scout your house out and then pay them and they find that you don't have bed bugs. So um, I, I strongly recommend it. Now, if you're going to send specimens, uh, if you have small specimens, send them in a vial of alcohol, if possible. You can use isopropyl or ethyl alcohol. Um, but it just, it just ensures that the small structures stay intact and they don't disintegrate. If you have larger specimens like beetles or, or um, bugs, you can pack those in paper towels and then place them in a Ziploc bag. But please ensure they're dead. Don't send live arthropods through the mail because you could be sending a problematic pests that could get out and spread to other areas of the state or country. So before you send a sample, it is 2018. And since many of you are viewing this uh, via an internet connection, you can email us photos in lieu of a physical sample or just give us a call. And if we get to see your, your, your photos before, before you send a sam uh, sample, we may be able to help you. Of course, if you want a confirmation for an identification of an insect or a pathogen, uh, it's best to send us a sample so we can do that. But feel free to co contact the, the lab or you can contact Jesse Ostrander directly at jesse.ostrander at ndsu.edu or myself at alexander.knutson.2 at ndsu.edu. 
And our lab's phone number is 701-231-7854. So in general, many plant disorders, unfortunately, are not caused by a pathogen or an insect. But it is extremely useful to rule out a pathogen or an insect problem. And just because you do not see insects, uh, it doesn't mean that they, they weren't present there in the past. Um, and of course, some insects and some arthropods, including mites, can be too small to see with the naked eye. Uh, now, often if the cause is environmental, trained personnel can only make the best guess. So if you have a imbalance in, in your, your soil chemi chemistry, we may be able to tell, but we won't be able to tell for certain. And so for that reason, the soil testing lab on campus is never a bad idea. In wet paper towels. And if you remove soil from the roots, you can save money on shipping, and it may improve the sample quality. Now, samples should be double bagged in Ziploc bags, but left open to breathe. Otherwise, the plants will start to rot. And place them in a sturdy shipping box. Uh, seal all the seams with tape and mail as early as possible in the week. So that way, if it gets here and you send it USPS and it gets to Campus Distribution Center on Tuesday and it sits for a couple days, we could hopefully still get it by Friday. Otherwise, it might sit over the weekend. And if it sits, it might degrade the quality of your sample. But if you have any questions on sending us a sample or anything at all, don't hesitate to give us a call. We'll be more than happy to help you. Lastly, there is a submission form, and it's available online, but it's not required. You can visit our web page to find the link. Uh, you know, you, you should, uh, fill out the basic information. Um, it's a fillable PDF. And uh, you know, like contact, um, address, so we can get you a report if need be, or we can tell you what your, your, your issues are. And just write a story or explain your concerns on the reverse side. Uh, don't worry about filling every section of the form. There are a lot, but it's it's designed that way to be a broad form that will allow many different people with many different problems to utilize it. And obviously, this is really important, do not put the form in the bag with the sample. Uh, we ask this because plants exude moisture. And if you leave your form in the bag, your form is gonna get wet. And if it's in pen or marker, we might not be able to read what your problem is. Now, the form is available online. So here is our website at, at www.ag.ndsu.edu slash PDL. And you can find the, here's our, our website, and you can find the link under submit a sample. Now, when you click this link, you'll find this form, which uh, is what I was just referring to. So make sure you fill out who is submitting uh, the, the sample and uh, who you want the results to go to, and of course, the plant. Now, we have three addresses. So if you have the opportunity, the easiest way is to walk in, and we are located in 206 Waldron Hall on NDSU's campus. However, we'll also take samples in the mail. Uh, we have a USPS address that delivers to campus distribution, and a shipping address that delivers to the plant pathology departmental office. So here are different locations again, and our mailing address for USPS is NDSU Plant Diagnostic Lab, NDSU Department 7660, uh, PO Box 6050, Fargo, North Dakota 58108-6050. And our FedEx UPS address is NDSU Plant Diagnostic Lab, 306 Walster Hall, Fargo, North Dakota 58102. And there's our telephone number again. Do you have any questions? Yeah, Alex. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you just answered. Somebody had a question about, is it all right? Can they just drop off the samples to your... Absolutely. We'll be more than happy to take any samples uh, uh, that you just drop off. Also, the submission form is not necessarily required. As long as you just tell us who it's for and what it is, we'll be able to fill that information out for, the, for ourselves. But that, so if someone has a sample they want to submit, but you think it should be in a separate envelope or package, so people should send the submission form separately? They can include it in the package. Um, 
they can they can either email it to us uh, and give us kind of a heads up that a sample is coming our way. They can also submit uh, include it in the package itself, but just don't include it in the bag. So you can include it outside of the bag. Or the easiest way and most convenient way is to use a Ziploc bag, place the form inside there. That way you're you can ensure that it won't get wet at all, even if package drowns. Okay, there you go. And about how many samples do you get a year? We roughly get around 4,000 samples every year. Uh, and about uh, about a third of those or so are horticultural samples. And the rest are broken up into either agronomic or into seed health testing. And do you find that most of your work is done uh, through digital cameras and email, or most of it's actually in the lab? Uh, most of our work is actually traditionally done in the lab. People bring us samples, and then we determine what their diagnoses are. However, uh, it's, uh, digital media has improved, and we have been, re been receiving more uh, submissions and requests of just digital material, like photographs of different people's trees or gardens. And I especially have received many different uh, requests from insect identifications online. Uh, of course, um, sometimes we're able to help, or a lot of times we are, but uh, it usually if you need absolute confirmation, a physical sample may be required. Okay. Uh, are you ready? Are you ready for spring? Because I had a couple questions. Usually I'm, I have some... Uh, I got to quick my brain on, you know, this time of year. <laughs> yeah. So we don't want to go too much in, this, in these specific situations, but since there's no other questions and we got a few minutes here, mm -hmm. somebody has an issue with down, downy mildew on their peonies. Do you have any recommendations for handling that? Um, and this is where I was a little nervous about the talk. So I, I am an you're an entomological diagnostician. <laughs> so I, I'm an entomologist, and my, my training is, is mostly related to insects. So, um, But uh, if you have downy mildew, um, it's, it's best to, to find the right type of fungicide that will actually act and control. So I think uh, I'll just, maybe I'll just help you out sure. a little bit here <clears throat> for what it's worth. Uh, if you got uh, fungal diseases on your peonies, First thing you can do this spring, do a really good job cleaning up the garden, or we should have done that last fall to get mm -hmm. any of that disease tissue out of your planting. Uh, you want to keep to minimize fungal problems. You want to keep the leaves dry when you water. So uh, water in the morning if you can and target the water at the base so the, so the leaves are as dry as possible. Uh, maybe the planting's getting a little congested. You know, maybe this upcoming late August, September, we want to divide our peonies and open them up. Um, usually for fungal sprays, the best way to deal with that is preventatives. Mm -hmm. So like you can get fungal diseases on peonies when the stems are just six, eight inches out of the ground. So a preventative spray of a fungicide at that time can help uh, prevent the problem. So you do that and we're well on our way. How about an entomology question? Okay. <clears throat> I got a couple here. Uh, back to the midges. Midges on Engelman ivy, hmm. and it strips the plants by the end of the year. They come back the next year, but it's ugly to look at each fall. Okay. So uh, if you have gall-forming midges, uh, one thing to keep in mind is most gall-forming insects, uh, they're, uh, they have a very brief window of actual control. So if you're waiting to control and you don't monitor your, your plants, you're going to have midges that'll come in, they'll make galls, and then they'll be protected by the plant tissue. So no method of control will really get rid of those while they've got themselves uh, put in place. Uh, one thing you can do is uh, uh, applications of essential oils or insecticides before they're there. Um, you just need to make sure that the timing is is right on par with their activity. So if you wait and it has a, sh a short um, half-life and you spray a, a week or so before the activity happens, and if the fungicide, or I mean if the insecticide um, washes away or wears away, then you won't have any effect. Another thing you can do is cultural control. And what that is, is you can remove the, the uh, affected plant uh, material 
And uh, it, especially at the end of the year in the fall, if you get rid of some of the vegetation that has some of the insect damage on it, some of that will actually harbor insects for the next year. So if you use that for mulch, it might be a good idea to dispose of it as far away from your plants. Okay, maybe just uh, one other question, mm -hmm. just to test your master level expertise now. Uh, congratulations on that. Thank you. How about uh, flea beetles? Okay, tips on controlling them. Flea beetles? Uh, flea beetles are, uh, it, they can be quite problematic, and it, it really depends on what plant you're working with, uh, but uh, flea beetles, you can, if you monitor and uh, watch their numbers. If you get them while they're, they're there are a few of them on the plants uh, early on, and you can control them then. You can prevent further compounding problems later, and that's really the big the big key. Is a lot of entomological problems. You need to monitor them and start them. You know, nip them in the bud. You want to try to take care of them right away because if you let them wait and put off, then you're going to have bigger compounding problems that might hurt you later on in the season. That's a you know that's a great point, Alex, and and uh, get you know get spend time in your garden so that when you see like those first shot holes appearing on your young plants, you can go attack those flea beetles and save your plant. And you know that reminds me, somebody once told me, what's the best treatment for your garden? What's the best you can give your garden? And you know what it is? Time. Time. Time and energy. Shadow. Your shadow is the best thing you can give your garden. That's what Native Americans mm -hmm. all say, like your footprint. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Because that's when you're out there spending time with your plants, like you say, the time and going after any problems that your plants may have. Does anybody else have, well, you passed that master's level question. I'm, <laughs> I think you're well on your way for your PhD any time now. How about, uh, does anybody else have any questions on the services of lab? <clears throat> So just you know, just to summarize it, there's information submission sheets online. There's you can use digital media to help. Services are free in most cases. Trained personnel, experts from NDSU, you know, there to help you. What a great service you guys mm -hmm. offer, and uh, and take advantage of that as well as take advantage of your local county extension agent. That's a local expert there that uh, have amazing levels of knowledge as well that they can share with you. So I see no other questions. So Alex, I'll just thank you for your talk today. We really enjoyed it. And uh, how about everybody, we'll take a five minute break before we'll start talking about some research on high value crops. There you go.